So coming back to our topic, I have organized the talk into certain aspects. Uh, I'm going to look at business analytics as a topic for conducting uh, four-star research, right? Uh, you can, like I said, take out business analytics and put whatever you want to put to assess, right? You don't, the first issue with uh, four-star research is you don't have the luxury of choice in the sense that, or you do have a little bit, you would like to research in a certain area, right? But this area is not considered as four-star, then it will be difficult to publish in a four-star journal. Right? You don't research in an area because you love it. You research in an area because it's a popular area. Right? Popularity is very important. Now, talking to a university like Ahlia, the College of Business, for example, you know, you may not have a lot of PhD students. You may not have research assistants at all. Maybe you need to combine because a lot of people complain that uh, they don't have time to do research because they're doing a lot of teaching, right? So maybe then you need to mix them. Identify some areas where there is strength in teaching and there is strength in research. So you teach and research the same topic. And enterprise, it's important to feed from this. You get some funding. So you can actually feed the research. It's a cycle. So you research, you teach what you research, you generate income from what you research, and you bring. Because for four star, you need a lot of work. And within the business analytics, I will talk about a specific paper. Like I said, today, the talk about this specific paper uh, is going to be brief. And in number two, I will talk more about what we have done to, to, to actually conduct four star. Now, most four star journals will require empirical data, but some will, will only, we can accept literature reviews. So why that is important? Because for empirical data, you need even more money to actually go and collect data. But for literature review, it's only desktop research. So that will reduce the amount of money needed. So if you are short of money, try to identify journals, for example, that will require, will accept literature reviews, and you will conduct the literature review according to what they want. And that's what we have done in this paper that I have been, I will talk about. So, let's look at the concept of business analytics, for example. Uh, I try to analyze the definition so I can see whether I fit within that. So, business analytics is the use of any data to perform using a collection of relevant methods, for example, descriptive, or to perform descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and or prescriptive analysis. Analysis to make decisions. So I am in the field of prescriptive analysis. So I think I fall within that one. Then I can see myself adding to it. So there is anecdotal evidence of the rise of something like business analytics. Right now, why business analytics is huge is because of the rise of data. Before, people said, we, we have a lot of analysis methods, decision-making methods, but we don't have data. The situation in the last few years flipped. We have so much data, but we don't have the right research methods and analytical methods for it. So, what is data right now, nowadays, before, 
before I have this slide, what is data? What is your image of data? What is data? Can you, when, you, when I say data, what's the face picture that comes into your head? It's not necessarily it's meaningful information. Huh? It's not meaningful. It's not, but how does it look like? Raw. R uh, raw, OK. Like meat? <laughs> I'm vegetarian. So, <laughs> so usually, when you say data, it's usually spreadsheets, numbers. Yeah. Numbers. Right now, the thing, things are different. Right now, yeah, this is the new way. Because 10 years ago, data was only numbers and text. Could be pictures. But we used to have videos before. We used to have all of this. But not enough quantity of it. Right now, it's huge volumes of numbers of texts, of pictures, videos, right? Even videos are now becoming data. And, and, and the issue of data is the quantity. Not just the existence of it, but existence in quantities, right? Star rating are data. When you go to any place now, there's a star rating. You can actually collect. And I'm sure you've, I have seen some projects in, that are looking at star ratings. Behavior. Somebody's behavior is data. Transactions. It, this is data. And where is this data? It's here. Everybody's got a smartphone in front of them. All right, or in their pockets, like your case and his case. So this is this is now, this is you. Okay? This is the new you. Right? Everything you have, this is more important than your wallet. If you lose your wallet, it's bad. But if you lose your smartphone, it's a disaster. Right? And this is data about you, data about what you do, and data about whom you are interacting with, data about the pictures you see, data about the videos you see. So it's not the videos themselves, they are data, but behavior. your behavior in watching them is also data. Yes. And you don't own it. That's the biggest problem. You, don't, you own it. Maybe you own some of it. But there are other organizations who own this with you, co-own with you. Whatever you do is known to somebody. Right? And because it's known to somebody, it can be captured by somebody, then it's data. So now people are now puzzled by not really how to analyze, I mean, no, uh, what data to analyze, but actually, what, the, what does it make any sense? So uh, your credit card. Transactions are captured by somebody. You're traveling, you're driving from where to where is captured by somebody. How, how often do you see your emails is captured by somebody. What you, what you buy is captured by somebody. Traveling. In, uh, if you go to London, there is something called the Oyster Card, which is uh, <coughs> a plastic card. You put credits in, you touch the bus, you go in, or you touch the underground, right? Or you can use your phone. You put your phone, and you, go, you touch in, touch out. So all these movements, imagine like uh, there are 5 million who use the public transport in London every day. So all this data is with somebody. So it's big and exploding and exploding. So. This is an opportunity for research. Because everybody now, when you say, when you hear the word big data, when I said data, you had a vision. When I, when I, see, when I say big data, and that's what we call now big data, everybody will have a different vision. Right? Maybe your visions for the word small data 
are similar, but when you talk about big data, everybody have a different understanding. And once you have something like that, then there is an issue. So, there are simple things you can do. Let's look at Scopus, for example. Articles on business analytics. They were under 250 per year, 2012. And then suddenly, it's going up. And it's not showing any coming down, right? And this is the rate of increase. Don't be fooled. Sometimes everything is going up. All publications are going up because with, with, uh, with the advent of online and open source and all of that, the number of publications and journals are going up on topics. But it's the rate of the increase that you need to look at. Okay? So, <clears throat> You are, a, let's say, for a college uh, perspective. Although it's business analytics, although it's business analytics, the biggest chunk is computer science, right? Business and management research in business analytics is 12%, 36% computer science, engineering, 12%, mathematics, 8%. So, it's hmm? global No, this is global. Uh, the whole world. Okay? Let's look at something else. This, these are the games you can play with Scopus for anything. You can just get some ideas, and I'm just showing you through using some simple tools how you can actually get some information before you do anything. Now, who is doing it? The affiliations of the people who are researching in business analytics. IBM Thomas, Watson, International Business Machine, which is IBM again, IBM Research, IBM University of Melbourne, IBM India, HP, University of Sydney, Chinese Academy of Science, and so on. So you will see that the biggest chunk is actually in the practice, in the, in the informatics provider. It is not in the universities. So it's practical. And when practice people are doing more research than academic, that means because they feel the heat. They want to do, there is a problem, they have a problem, and they want to solve it. But the academics are not picking up. But you know, because their practice starting it, we know Eventually, it will become a hot topic. So it's not still hot topic in academia yet, but at least up to 2018. Now let's look at the topic of big data. Again, up to 2012, there is below 5,000. And then we are now talking about Ks, thousands, thousands, right? There's an explosion, a little bit of a lull here, and then shooting up again. Okay, now let's look at something else more interesting. Computer science, engineering, these are the big one. Management, management, business and management, 3%. Yes, so it's mainly computing and computer science are actually working on analytics and business analytics and big data. The share of business and management is very small. This is worldwide, Scopus, right? Only Scopus, obviously. Now let's see where China, 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 China. China, 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 before we discuss it. It's all China. And then, yes, number, number 10 is University of Oxford. So the new world, this is giving you idea. So where if you want, somebody, if you want to collaborate with people who are doing big data research, where do you go? China. Yes. 
everything, you know, we thought, you know, Chinese are making everything, but now even in the research. Now, what do we learn from that? When you see mainly, when you see the computer science and engineering, and when you read papers about business analytics and uh, analytics in general, data analytics, data science, big data, and engineering, they only look at methodological aspects, right? So they have a specific methodological issue, and they create a methodology for it, and they give us an example. Could be real data, could be simulated data. But they are focused on specific method. But what they don't have, and, and because that's not their job, they deliver methods. They create methods. But they do not have a holistic business approach, right? So the computer science, they are, you know, they, are, they look at data. They look at deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all of these, ask, uh, all of these uh, uh, approaches to analyze data. But they don't care about what's before that and what's after that. Uh, because that's not their job. They just want to be creative in the methods. So there is no holistic business approach. Secondly, there is no agreed definition. But I'm, I'm, I'm not saying what the computer scientists are, are doing is not important. I think it's very important. But what you need is the brackets, the business brackets. And this is where the business and computing work together. There is no agreed definition for selecting. So the computer scientists will develop the method will develop the approach to solve a problem. The business person, the business an uh, analytics person, should then be able to select the problem and which solution is better. Overall, there is more data than, there is, than their business analytic methods. There is a big gap. Now, big data will change business models. You know, in, in a business, we're teaching organization in certain ways, accounting in certain ways, economics of it in certain ways. These types are taught in certain ways. The big data is going to change all of that because the virtuality and the availability of things is going to change. You know, supply and demand and supply chain, all of this is going to change because of big data. So, in terms of teaching, let me show you some data. I'm not going to show you some data, but you can go and find out because it's only UK. But according to UK, by 2020, there will be 157,000 job uh, gap in the UK alone by 2020. When is 2020? When is it? <laughs> Next year. And it's only in the UK. Only in the UK, the skill gap is going to be 157,000 in business analytics. That'll be the, that's the demand for, for it. Okay? And you can go to this website, Tech UK. Now, GMAC, have you seen GMAC? You know GMAC? Which is the uh, organization that provides the GMAC tests? They have an annual employment survey, and they said 70% of the companies they have asked, they wish they, they want to employ a business analyst. Okay? According to BLS, Bureau of Labor of Statistics, that analytics is one of the fastest rising jobs, is the fastest rising job. But there is a, in, in the future, there are two jobs that are actually going to, two types of jobs that are going to be higher, higher than any other jobs, according to USA and in the USA. 
One of them is business analytics. What's the other one? What's the other one? And it's also, an, uh, you can guess it by doing some analysis. What's the other one? The highest skill on demand skill. Mm -hmm. Business analytics. Big data. Huh? Big data. No, yes. Computer science. Uh, no, not physiotherapy by itself. Not physiotherapy by itself. Yes, physiotherapy is. Physiotherapy is one of it. I know you just mean <laughs> it was good luck. So it's actually home care. Home care visits. Home care visits. Yeah. So health, health by assistance. By nurses, by doctors, yes. Physicians. Because the people there are not dying young. Yes. Uh, 90, they're averaging 90, 95 easily. But, and there are a lot of them. Huh? Yes, so it's aging and they need support. They're not dying, but they need support. So there'll be huge, there'll be huge demand for, for home care, health, home care, and business analytics. So, you know, that's why if you go, if you look into the UK, seen now there is a race by universities to develop courses in uh, business analytics especially postgraduate business analytics because of the gap 157,000 and all of these people uh, you know the companies they want people so you mostly at this stage mostly uh, the people who are actually currently working are discovering the need for these skills, so they need to upskill themselves. So what do they do? What do they do? They go and enroll in a postgraduate. That's why there is an explosion in the UK of business analytics postgraduate. But this will be followed soon by undergraduate. So in enterprise, if you have a business analytics research center, it is easier to actually, because it doesn't require a lot, a lot of running and a lot of smooth talking. A lot of academics would like to be consultants, but because we are academics, we don't know how to be consultants. Because for a consultant, business consultant, you have to assume a certain personality that doesn't necessarily match the, the, the academic personality. But analysis and analytics is desktop. The people are not looking for ideas of how to design a system for them, but they are looking of ways to analyze this data. They have huge data. Every business, they have a lot of transactions coming online. So well, they will send you the data, and you analyze it. And, it, and using different methods, uh, with that, you can come up with it. Now, this is a proposed framework. If you look at the, if you remember the computer science, they will actually be looking, they will be looking at doing things vertically. They can do descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, or prescriptive. But the business analytics need to look at it by looking at the business problem and the solution. And it's a framework. So you need to identify whether it's a descriptive diagnostic, predictive, and so on. And that's the difference. This is the business way, the business approach. The computer approach is vertical. The business approach is holistic. So the research is the 30% the of 40% computer science we showed, they will only look at a dot in this framework. Now, as a business analytics, you don't need to conduct the analytics, the computer scientists will do that. But it's how do you actually fit that within a business approach? The business analytics is the consultant, one consultant, subject of this whole project. Just only make the analysis, well, make analysis and also make a decision. No, they don't make a decision. 
Consultants don't make decisions. Just only analysis. Only analysis. And then they take the money and go. So if the business collapses, it's not their problem. <laughs> hmm? Just like when you have, huh? Yeah, and, uh, nothing, yeah. Nothing? Yeah. What do you mean nothing? Nothing, yeah. It's pretty easy, I think. Easy? Yeah. And your job is difficult? Easy for me. Ah, it's easy, OK. <laughs> easy for the expert he needs. Yes, yes. The problem is how to become an expert. That's the question. That's the issue. So, given the rise of uh, analytics, and then uh, we saw that because we are doing some pre prescriptive analytics, which is a simulation, we thought, let's try to see whether we can develop a four-star paper. So, within the simulation, we identified a gap. And the gap is, in a small data, and I will differentiate between small data and big data. And small data, which is any, uh, five years ago, small data systems are complex, and then you apply simulation approaches to them, and you solve the problems. But in big data, there is uh, an increased complexity, which is there is more information. Before... Uh, Ah. There is no single definition for big data. Each organization, each uh, company will be you know, defining it in different ways. It's on their challenges. If you, if you do some research on big data, you will not find one single definition for it. No single definition. No. Yeah. No single. There are some characteristics, there are some characteristics which you know, characterize a data as big data, like the volume of it, the variety of the type, and you know. Uh, velocity of collecting it, of generating it. There are six Bs, volume, velocity, variety, which might characterize data as big data, but uh, no one definition for big data. Yes, so, uh, and that's one of, the, that's the gap I mentioned earlier. If you can have some more, some more or less common definition or uh, vision of data, small data. <coughs> but when it comes to big data, Everybody will have a certain vision about it. And if you look at the variety, uh, small data is mainly text and numbers. But now, uh, everything. There's so many varieties. The videos, the transactions, the behaviors, everything. Right? The weather and, and, and putting them together. So it's not just this type of data alone and this type of data alone, all together. Can you actually mix weather data with market data, with the behavioral data? Uh, yes, but these variables are also different in nature and type. You could have multiple variables, but they have the same, they're coming, the numbers, basically. But these are different. You look at videos, you look at financial data, yeah, all of these things. But the other thing is the velocity. And that's the issue. And if she mentioned the velocity, because of the, because of the ease <coughs> of which now data is collected and, uh, and the source and the information points, right? Before, to collect data, you have to go either use a stopwatch or have a notepad. Right now, data is coming to you. So this, right? So your smartphone and the smartphone, the app creator or whoever in the center, data is just generated. Every time somebody, uh, you know, if you, if you use a, a touch card, every time somebody coming in, it's logged. Every, every time somebody's going out, it's logged. So all this data is created, credit card, all of this created and collected, yes. Now, the problem is, if you don't know about something, if it's a black box concept, then there is no problem. If it is moving, there is, a, there is no problem. But sometimes, because you know more, 
you discover more problems and you discover more complexities, right? Whether in you know, like a human body, before people say, oh, somebody has got a fever, headache, stomach, you know, the four, four, four symptoms. Right now, there is CT scan, MRI, EEG, ECG, and all of these are collecting more information. And then you are discovering more problems. You know, the increase of rate of cancer, for example, it's partially, not obviously completely, partially attributed to the fact that we will know, we know about it more yeah. or better. Okay? So now, with the increase of information points, we've got, we know more about the complexity of the system. With the increase of, uh, um, and because we, we know, then we have more people involved. And when you have more people involved, then there's more complexity. So the traditional ways of simulation may not be uh, uh, relevant. And these are four main simulation uh, tools, approaches, agent-based, system dynamics, Monte Carlo, and discrete event simulation. And all of these, each of these boxes, represent in itself an approach to solve a problem. But because of the rising complexity, what we thought about, let's try to see if we can link them together. Can we actually get a better view? And that's coming back from the rising complexity, from the increased data, from the business analytics. <clears throat> so we will focus on <clears throat> three out of four, because these are dynamic simulations. This is a snapshot simulation, which is like the difference between uh, the old moving pictures. You know, we have so many, uh, uh, what's it called? Pictures, when it frames, when you, when you run them fast, you can see a movie. Uh, while this is now the new magnetic tape, where it's all continuous. Now, let me just give you a brief description about each one of them, which I will talk more about it next time. This is a discrete event simulation, is, in, is involved with looking at sequences, processes, with output, modeling, and generating out, uh, output, input, modeling, output. And here, for example, if you have a waiting line, your input will be how, ma how often things come in, how long does it process each one of them, and your output will be the average waiting time. So that's a discrete. And I gave a presentation, I gave this before, about the accident emergency, emergency model yeah. that we, what we did for a university, King Abdullah Hospital in Jordan. <laughs> Uh, this is a model of an accident emergency department. Okay? So we, uh, we, we, we run it to actually see how often we can, how, how many doctors do we need, how many nurses, and, and so on. And you change it, you run it, and you see what will be the impact. Now, system dynamics doesn't look at the individuals, it looks it's almost like you're zooming out. This was the, oh, shifted. It's supposed to be here. This is the actual emergency, but we zoomed out, and we make policy decision, and we see the overall community impact. And then you run it maybe for 10 years. If you run the accident emergency for one day, you run the system dynamics for 10 years, and you see how it behaves. Another one is agent-based. And agent-based is, is a computer science, but we're bringing it to, part, uh, to be part of the simulation. And this is, it models the behavior of people and how they interact. So you interact, as a result of the interaction, something emerges, there's an outcome. And this outcome is not predicted sometimes. So the agent behaves in their, they have a central internal processing and they'll make a decision autonomously. So, 
desktop research, what we did, the four of us, uh, one, two, three, four people, uh, what we wanted to do is basically, I think I put the slide, uh, what we wanted to see is hybrid simulation, is how we actually link all of these together. This is the discrete event simulation, the processing. This is the agent base, the interaction and behavioral, and this is the system dynamics. This is a company who is looking at their sustainability policies, and they want to see whether it's going to work or not. So they, when they, are, and they introduce a reusability, so reusing parts. Okay, so you get the parts, and that will increase the raw material, they will increase the production, they will increase the revenue, plus, 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 the blue is plus. But because they increase the production, the reuse will increase the need for transport, which means it will increase the cost, and that will have a bearing on the production cost, which means will have a bearing on the, re, the, the reuse. So it's basically, can you generate more profit from the reuse through the re-enhancing being negatively impacted by the cost and the increased cost of production? So sometimes you make a decision there are, something, there are things called unintended consequences. So the system dynamics is good, is good in identifying unintended consequences. You make a decision today, everything is working. But tomorrow, you will face some problem. The system dynamics will anticipate for you what will be the potential problems. So now, we identify that reuse will have an increase in production cost. So if the production cost is going to be more than the benefit of reuse, what's the company going to do? Are they going to look after the environment? If, you, if, if your reuse is out. Anyway, now inside the models, you can have these type of models, the, the supply chain model, to actually see the actual change. Now, what, what did we do? Comprehensive literature review, and do it properly. Four reviewers, web of knowledge. One reviewer look at web of knowledge. The other reviewer look at Scholar, Google Scholar. Number three, uh, search on Scopus. And the reviewer for and search strategy for web of knowledge. And each one of, by the way, they'll be overlapping. Now, Scopus is not the only source. Web of knowledge is another major one, and, and it's like big circles. Scopus is much bigger circle than web of knowledge, and they'll be overlapping. But there are also some articles that are actually outside Scopus, and you cannot just ignore them. Um, there's no best one. Scope is the, the biggest one is Scopus. Scopus is the biggest. Yes. In the best ranking journal in the world. I, no, I can't say that. Why? Because it's not. Why? <laughs> What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Best. Why? <laughs> So, web of knowledge is much smaller. So we found 199 papers. Scholar, Google Scholar is the biggest because, because it's not a database. It's a search base. It's an internet search engine. And there's a difference between a database and a search engine. The database owns the papers. The Scopus searches where it is. So they don't own it, but they know where to find it. And that's why 1,305. 
and Scopus 161. And initial web of knowledge results based on keywords combination 763. And, and in this case, you will find that web of knowledge has got more than Scopus in this particular field. Okay? So when you do a search, you assume the same keywords, right? Abstract reading. My role was to look at this one. And I have done 1,300 and fair. Yes. But, but you read them, when you read them, it's almost like marking. It's like you are marking scripts. Only abstract. You only read the abstract, you don't read the whole thing. And then, from there, 62 out of 199, 101, 131, and 163. By the end, Scopus was the most matching? Well, uh, what knowledge? Uh, the, the, the final, the fi they're all almost the same, but what you need to do is then look at overlapping because sometimes, because each one of us read it separately, and then you need to look at the overlapping ones. And you can find the same paper in two? In both, yes. yes. Most definitely, Google Scholar will have both of them. And then, when you have the paper matched in all four, only 284 has been matched, that's been matched by all of them. Okay? When you have only matched by partial matching, for example, two people found it, but not more, we will read again, because we want to ensure that all the papers are there. Now, after the final matching, 284, we read the abstract again, but in more detail this time. And we want to see, do we really want this paper? And then we went into the final matching. And we had a meeting about the contentious one. There are things that if you all agree, it's fine. But if three agree, because all of us, we have to read the same now. If, if the four agree, it's fine. If three agree, it's OK. But two, uh, one, if one, only one, it's rejected. Two, we will discuss whether to include or not. And then we will have a final number that we want to include. And that's when we actually go and read the papers. And I will tell you more about reading the papers. And the final one was 139, oh, says 200 here. And then the 200 we've been read twice. Each paper is read twice. Okay? And out of the 200, the final number is 139. And then we conduct the review, right? So it's almost 10% from the maximum 1,300, because if you put them together, it's about 1,400 papers. And then we, we, we read about 139. Now, I'm going to talk about the reading in the other presentation. But here, you're reading not to explore knowledge, you are collecting data. And this is actually, it's difficult in the first few uh, minutes. But after that, uh, sorry, papers. But after that, you are looking for method, for example. Which method did they use? Very quickly. Ah, you go to the methodology, you identify, you put it in a spreadsheet. It becomes like data collection. And this is being published in uh, 
European Journal of Operation Research recently. It's a four star, but before we published, the, the secret of the trade is you send a proposal to the editor and you say, I want to conduct a review in this topic. Like a, a clinical trial, like this. Yes. Or just at, at, at the beginning of your work. Yes, yes. But that, you have to choose the right topic. And the right topic, you have to go and do the initial search in the scopus. What's the rising topic? What's the hot topic? Because, you know, journals now, obviously, are looking to improve their standing to publish in hot topic. And hot topic is a combination of increased focus in the literature, but also increased focus in the practice. It has an impact. You could have something very clever, but doesn't have a lot of impact. It's very theoretical. So impact is important. And the way to measure impact, you can look at market, uh, market uh, sizes. You can look at market reports. Uh, and I'm, uh, when I say market, I don't mean uh, just the financial markets, even job markets, and all of these, and economic markets. And can you check uh, for Google Science or Google Publications in Adelaide University? Scopus, I no, can't. Google Science. I don't know, I don't know. Scopus now is monopolizing everything. There are journals in Scopus, not all the Scopus indexes in uh, Google Science, right? Yes. So, uh, I, I think there must be some affiliation, it's like Scopus. I don't know, but I think you can, because if you go to Scopus and you want to search, you can search by affiliation. And if you just put Ahliya. Luckily, I think there are only two, it's only one university that's called Ahliya. If you just put Ahliya, you will have the information without worrying that it might just be uh, overlapping with another university. Can you bring the, the last one, the publications? Yes. Uh, these two uh, publications were like a literature review or some of them? This is a literature review yes. and this is a panel about the literature review. A panel? A panel in a conference. We were invited to talk about it. And these are my co-authors. Yes. So uh, uh, Prof Professor Brailsford, she is from University of Southampton. Martin Kunk, he used to be in University of Warwick. Now he moved to University of Southampton. And Navunil Mustafi uh, is in Exeter. So again, and they are all you know, leaders in this field. So you connect with the leaders in the field because it makes it that improves <coughs> and enhances the chances for you to get because they will write a letter. So Sally, she is the first author because she's the editor in chief of General of Health Systems. Yeah. And she sent the letter to, obviously that doesn't make a difference, mm -hmm. but it helps. Yeah. So it's very important. No, 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 I said it helps. It's not, I didn't say it's not important, uh -huh. uh, and it's, it doesn't change the, how things are viewed, but it, it will understand the current uh, direction the journal is taking. Yeah. Right. Regarding all these authors, no one, uh, I didn't catch the speciality for them. Uh, anyone is included in the health? System? Yes. She is the editor of a journal called Health Systems. No, pure health, no, no. But they're all working in health systems, supporting health decisions. Even this one, he's actually looking at hospitals and the links between hospitals. We all have something to do with health, but from a management perspective, but not a medical doctor. Okay. Can you bring the slide with the analysis of uh, maybe business analytics by 
Constitution. This is big data. Thomas, with the highest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. IBM Thomas. Thomas, this is a person or a research no, no. center? It's a research center. Research center. But it's called uh, Thomas Watson. IBM. It's an IBM research center. Research center, no? Yeah. But it's uh, some sort of involving academia, right? Or no? It's not, not an academia like a higher education institute, but like a research center. Research. Yeah, yes, yes, like I said, you know, the enterprise, for example, the enterprise is about this. Mm -hmm. This is about commercialization. Yes. And how do you actually, and, and what I said uh, is that business analytics will provide more opportunities for commercialization because data is coming to you rather than going, you going out to companies, uh -huh. data is coming to you. And how data is coming to me? Yeah, it's available in clouds and you know, yeah. all this. There are some people who generate Twitter feeds and all of these aspects. Two years. Two years. Uh, two years and a little bit. Plus. This I'll put in part two. Yes. I, I, I just wanted to, this is the part where you, first of all, generate the idea. Yes. Yeah. Five. Five. Somebody doesn't want to accept it. How far between how far between submission? Between they give you sorry by the time they give you the decision and you submit again, how far? Yeah. I just try to make it shorter so that the reviewer does. Why do they send it to a new reviewer? Because they some should send it to the same reviewer. No, no, no. There's some journals. Uh -huh. first, first round, two or three reviewers. After submission of response, they send it to a new reviewer. Second, second round. And third round, new reviewers. And if you, if you compare the, the commits from the first round, Second round, third, and fourth, it will make you see perfect. No, no, I mean. First no. round, you only comment with the family, why I tell you that? I'm not together. No, I found this very strange. It's very important, by the way. Yes. Okay. I think you have a, a recent the same, experience. The same, the same. Experience. Yes, the same, I have it. I've never had this. Usually, paper. when I submit a paper, uh -huh. it's the same person. They send it to the same person. No, no, no. Okay. 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 I published a paper just, just now published in the Journal of Medicine. You know, you know, do you hear about that? About this journal? It's very difficult, by the way, to publish it. Yeah. Very difficult. Mm. How many rounds? I think four or five rounds. Okay? Mm. I submit the paper, I think, December 2017. 2017. And accepted in January 2019. Mm. And published in March 2019. Yeah. How many rounds? Four rounds. Mm. Every round includes three reviewers. Mm. First round, three reviewers. Different? Different. But this, is, this, is a, this is a big problem, by the way. I, this is very strange. Uh, they have been comments. Second reviewers, second rounds. Why you did, pick, why you did the, uh, this one? Uh, that you have to do this, that you have to do, you have to delete this one. This is a comments for the first round. No, no. I will, I will, uh, I will write a letter. I will write a le I will write a letter to the editor, uh, especially if the reviews started to be conflicting, 
that this is not acceptable. It is not acceptable. I, I the first I set of reviewers yeah. should be the, pair, the, the second, the, when, when you do it again, should be the same people that you send. Because uh, they are, they ask her. It's, that, it's like that. Yeah. The fact that they change, did they tell you they change? Ah. Yeah, you complain. Is he is he the editor in chief or? Uh -huh. Is he is it part of a society? Is it uh, is he is it part of a society? Is it part of a society? Yeah. Uh, the, the journal. Journal here, International Journal of uh, Finance and Economics. But our society? Society or, or Yama? Yama. Is produced by a university? <laughs> they will have, uh, in the, if you go to the journal website, they will have uh, by law where to contact if you have a complaint or have an issue. Because no one should be absolute controller. But where is it now? Yes, but you are appealing the process. But uh, where is the paper now? لا وين ان ان وي ستيب معك والحياه النيو بروبلم لايك يو كان دو ذيم ذا نيو ريكويرمنتس موجود نيو ريكويرمنتس بس كان يو ميك ذيم طبعا هو كل كل مره انا بسويها يعني من راوند 1 في ريكويرمنتس في تغيير ميثودولوجي في دي تشغيله في كذا اشتغل الثالث الرابع الان والخامس نيو ريكويرمنتس بالكامل ناو افتر ذيس وان Now that should be it. Make sure you, it's it. If they come back to you with nonsense, again, go to the website of the journal and you will find complaint procedures. Because it is not about, this is not an academic decision. This is a, an issue in the process. The process itself is, is flawed. They can't, they can't change the reviewers and they can't send you an email saying we accept it and then they say, Because when you say they accept it, I'm sure they'll have some reasons. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, uh, I submit the paper 